It's the fact that I already filmed this whole video once, forgot a movie in the middle, and had to restart. Hey y'all, welcome and welcome back and welcome back for me because I just did this. So last night I watched The Nun 2 for the first time and I was inspired to make this video. I was like, you know what? I've seen them all now. I want to sit down and rank all of my favorite Conjuring movies from least good, in my opinion, to best, in my opinion. Now for the ramble, let's get into this for the second time. Number nine and my least favorite in the franchise is the 2021 film The Conjuring The Devil Made Me Do It. This film follows Ed and Lorraine Warren as they tackle a true crime case. In 1981, Arnie Johnson went on trial for taking the life of his landlord. His defense team argued that Arnie Arnie was in fact possessed by the devil and his actions were not his own. Ed and Lorraine tried to prove Arnie's innocence. This movie doesn't go exactly as the case went, but it is interesting. It kept me interested the whole time, but I will say if you want, you know, pretty spot on details, I would go check the actual footage out yourself, watch some documentaries. Now my issue with this movie is it didn't show enough of the case. This was one of the most infamous cases that the Warrens worked on and I feel like they should have given it much more attention. And instead with this movie we got more of Ed and Lorraine's personal life which I don't mind but I just feel like using it on this story was kind of a miss. This was actually the only Conjuring film other than The Nun 2 because I just watched it that I have seen only once. I watched it when it came out in theaters and I never watched it again so this one's my least favorite. Not saying it's a bad movie, it's just not my movie. Number eight on this list is the 2019 film, The Curse of La Llorona. In the 1970s, a social worker and her children are put in the direct path of La Llorona after ignoring the warnings upon warnings from a concerned mother. This wasn't a bad movie per se. It was actually really cool to see La Llorona in the light of the universe that James Wan has created. I think they did a really good job with her. I think the movie was really good. My issue with it is it didn't need to be a part of the Conjuring universe. And I know movies have been, you know, standalone from this franchise and I'm not really sure what the thought process was piecing it together unless it ties around with another film, which it very well could. But as of right now, it is my number eight and I feel like it shouldn't be in the franchise. I like the movie. I would like it a whole lot better if it was by itself. Number seven is another 2019 film and that is Annabelle Comes Home. To try and keep Annabelle at bay, the Warrens lock her in a room in their house that is also filled with even more haunted and cursed objects. Shortly after this, they go out of town to tend to a case and they leave Judy in the hands of a babysitter. Well, it doesn't take too long for Annabelle to start with the shenanigans. Now, I thought this was a good movie. I don't necessarily dislike any of the Annabelle movies. I didn't think it was really necessary for the storyline. It kind of felt like a filler movie, like they were just trying to make something and make money off of it, which I'm sure they did, but I don't really think it was necessary. I did like it. The jump scares were very good. The storyline was good, but that's my only issue with it. Number six is the 2014 film Annabelle. A husband brings home a beautiful porcelain doll for his pregnant wife that collects porcelain dolls and she falls madly in love with this doll. But soon after they realize that something is extremely sinister with this doll and something very evil is attached. I love how this movie was done. I love the tie-in with the cult because this was taking place around the satanic panic time. And I just love how they just tied it in with a neat little bow. It was really cool to just talk about kind of the outside world. I love it when movies do that, when they mention like cultural things that are happening during the time of the movie. And I thought it was brilliant. I thought the jump scares were great. Everything was fantastic. And there is one specific scene I'll just show you. I saw it in the trailer, knew it was coming in the movies, and it scares me every time I watch it. Every single time. Number five, we have the 2018 film, The Nun. A nun who has not yet taken her vows and a priest go to investigate the recent passing of a nun. Lurking within these walls that are supposed to be holy is an evil that none of them have quite yet encountered. It is a demon, but not just any demon. A demon that has taken the shape of a nun. Is this movie cheesy? Yes. Is it one of my favorites in a guilty pleasure? Yes. I think it's the perfect amount of cheesy and scary and nothing will beat seeing this on the big screen in a dark room. So I saw this when it came out and AMC does these random little things during October. It's like you pay $5 and you go see a mystery movie. And this happened like two years ago. I hadn't really revisited The Nun since then. And I remember sitting down in that seat and The Nun came on and we got the tickets last minute. So we were propped up against the screen. Like we were sitting like this, right? 
and the movie scared me so bad. Like I had forgotten how actually terrifying it was in that situation in the dark. And I talked to others in the theater as well and they were like, whoa, that was actually really scary. <laughs> so this one's always gonna hold a little special place in my heart for a little cheesy comfort movie. Number four is the 2023 film, The Nun 2. The Nun 2 picks up right back where the first nun left off and follows this same nun who is fighting the same evil yet again. I thought this movie was better than the first one. I liked the storyline better. I liked that we were familiar with the characters and they kept them while adding on some really important new additions. The scares were insane. I was caught off guard several times and it's typically just one or two jump scares that get me. No man, it was like five or six. I was out of my seat. But this one was solid, no notes. I loved it. Is it cheesy? Absolutely. Um, the ending, cheesy. It's just, it's fine. You don't go into a demonic nun movie and expect Shakespeare. It is what it is and it's good for what it is. Now let's get into my top three movies in the Conjuring franchise. Number three is the 2013 film, The Conjuring, the OG. The Warrens go to investigate a newly purchased farmhouse that the Perrin family is now residing in. And upon getting there and trying to debunk things, they notice that the activity is getting worse and worse and worse until it is unbearable. This is a very real case that the Warrens investigated. And as far as I know, I think the house is a museum of sorts now and you can definitely tour it. It's still standing. The family's not there anymore, but you can definitely tour the house. It's said to be one of the most haunted houses in America. The movie's horrifying. And as scary as this movie is, it really doesn't even come close to what this family actually endured. And there's a lot of really good documentaries about it. Number two on my list is the 2016 film, The Conjuring 2. Ed and Lorraine Warren exit a mental health break to go check on a family in London. They find a frantic mother who contacted them for help and upon investigating, they discover that this isn't just any haunting. It's seeming to be like one of the daughters is showing clear signs of demonic possession. By trying to help this girl and save her, the spirit then turns its attention to the Warrens. I don't have any notes on this movie, but one thing that did bug me is the crooked man. That's some people's favorite part in this movie. I feel like name dropping him and showing him was so unnecessary to then in turn not really do anything with him. Unless like the previous thing that I said, they're going to tie it in with another movie, which they could. They kind of did that with Valak, but... I don't know, just like the name drop randomly and then just nothing else after we're so intrigued. I didn't like it. I wish they hadn't done it. The scares in this movie are fantastic. The story's fantastic. And everyone that was cast in this movie was great. And now, number one, drum roll. That is the 2017 film, Annabelle Creation. This movie follows an all girls orphanage that has since been relocated to a toy maker's home. They soon learn that this toy maker and his wife lost their daughter that went by the name Annabelle some years earlier. All things seem fine until one of the girls ventures into a forbidden room and finds a doll. The doll. The scares in this one still get me no matter how many times I've seen it. I love the storyline. I think it was so incredible. So that's without a doubt my favorite. I would love to know the order in which your favorites are in the comments for sure because I'm sure mine are different. I've never met anyone that has the like same sequence of favorites. Now my sequence of the Scream franchise is very common. Everyone has the exact same favorites in that franchise, but The Conjuring is kind of all over the place. Now let me give you the universe chronological order timeline because I wrote it down. This is really just for me to go back and check for whenever I do this. So chronological order, we have The Nun, Annabelle Creation, The Nun 2, Annabelle, The Conjuring, Annabelle Comes Home, The Curse of La Llorona, the Conjuring 2, and The Conjuring The Devil Made Me Do It. So that is the order in which I will be binging very soon. Thank you guys so much for watching this and for entertaining my little list idea. Um, I've been wanting to do this for a really long time, but just now got around to watching The Nun 2. So I'm glad I did it. Hope you guys liked it, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!